the ICC was a topic of debate at the 22nd AU summit, um, and mainly uh, African heads of state uh, expressed their disappointment uh, with the UN Security Council, firstly, for not granting a postponement of investigations and prosecutions in the situation in Kenya. Uh, and they also did mention specifically ICC uh, with regards to Article 16, which talks of investigation and postponement of investigation and prosecutions in Kenya, Sudan, and also amendment to Article 27, which does not recognize immunity of an African head of state. Basically, the AU leaders um, recommended that African heads of state should follow up on these amendments uh, with the working group on amendments uh, at, in New York here and also ensure that uh, these proposals are discussed and carried on to fruition. So definitely the ICC was topic of discussion. Well, firstly, the letter is purported to have been written by um, by the Kenyan delegation. Of course, uh, legal advisors from Africa did acknowledge that this letter was written by the Kenyan government, although the Kenyan government denied. Um, basically, the, the letter was calling for, um, the first of us, the letter was accusing NGOs and the ICC uh, of several other falsehoods, uh, but also demanding that unless their concerns are addressed, then they would deny cooperation with the ICC by the end of April. Uh, so basically they are calling for uh, an amendment to Article 27, the relevant of official capacity of heads of state, and ensuring that African heads of state are not prosecuted while they're in power. No, not all AU member states are critical of the court. Um, We've seen right from 2009 when Chad was the first state that entered reservation on the land cooperation decision of, of the AU. Um, since then, Botswana has consistently disregarded AU decisions. Uh, in addition to that, you've had in the past, uh, in Daiti Omar El Bashir of Sudan was supposed to visit Uganda. The Ugandan government threatened to arrest him. The same thing happened in Malawi, uh, and then there was also South Africa. So there have been clear instances, Burkina Faso is another example, and Zambia. There have been clear instances where states parties have remained committed to obligations to the ICC and stated very clearly to ICC indictees that they would be arrested if they stepped on ICC soil. The only distinctive thing you have to note there, and this also comes out very clear in the recent AU decision, is that the AU believes in the principle of unity. What that means is that the AU feels that they can only be heard by the international community if they stand as one united block against the international community. So that, in a way, kind of uh, gives the perception that the whole of the African Union is opposed to the court, but it's only that principle that binds them. Well, firstly, civil society uh, met with several African states parties, uh, encouraging them to remain committed to the statute. Um, then we're also clarifying some of the misperceptions um, that arise from the court's activities in Africa. And also civil society gave views uh, condemning any actions aimed at promoting immunity uh, for senior government officials, which is not recognized by the International Criminal Court and also the draft court protocol of the African Court of Justice and Human Rights, which in its current state does not recognize immunity for any senior government official. Um, unfortunately, there's discussions around amending that protocol uh, to ensure that African heads of state enjoy immunity. So civil society gave their views expressing um, dissatisfaction with such initiatives, but also encouraging African states to remain firm and committed to the ICC.